So how did we come up with our current model of the atom? In 500 BC, a clever Greek man named Democritus thought that stuff might be made of tiny solid balls called atoms. 2,300 years later, another man called John Dalton thought that each element might have its own atom. But in 1897, JJ Thompson made an incredible discovery. He built an electron gun, and he realised that atoms could give off smaller particles called electrons. So atoms weren't solid after all. Thompson called this the plum pudding model of the atom due to its uncanny resemblance to a plum pudding. The electrons were likened to the plums, and the ball of positive charge holding the electrons in place is the pudding. But 12 years later, Ernest Rutherford proved this model wrong in his famous alpha scattering experiment. He fired positive alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold atoms to see how much the alpha particles were deflected or scattered. Now if the plum pudding model was correct, the alpha particles would simply pass through the gold atoms. But surprisingly, 1 in 20,000 alpha particles were deflected backwards. So Rutherford deduced three things about the atom. Firstly, the nucleus must be very, very heavy. Because if it wasn't, the alpha particle would knock away the nucleus like a snooker ball. Secondly, the nucleus must be positive because it deflected positive alpha particles. And thirdly, it must be very small because most of the alpha particles missed it completely. Rutherford called this the nuclear model, with electrons orbiting the nucleus like planets orbiting the sun. But there was a problem with this model. In the same way that a coin loses energy as it spirals toward the centre of a coin funnel, the orbiting electrons would quickly lose electromagnetic energy and would spiral toward the nucleus. In the nuclear model, atoms would collapse. Now clearly this doesn't happen, so in 1913, Niels Bohr came up with a solution. He imagined that electrons filled up an atom in shells or energy levels. You could think of it like books filling up a bookshelf, and once an energy level is full, the electrons can't go any lower, and this prevents the atoms from collapsing. This is known as the Bohr model, and it's the one used in most textbooks. So to summarise, JJ Thompson developed the plum pudding model with electrons held in a region of positive charge, Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment led to the nuclear model with the electrons orbiting the nucleus like planets around the sun, and Bohr refined the nuclear model by placing the electrons in shells or energy levels. But since the Bohr model, small adjustments have been made. In 1917, Rutherford discovered that the nucleus was made of protons. In 1932, James Chadwick discovered that it also contained neutrons, and in the 1960s, it was also discovered that neutrons and protons are actually made of even smaller particles called quarks. Oh, and atoms actually look a bit more like this, but we'll save that for another video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more maths and science videos.